And I now give the floor to Ms. Hindu Ibrahim. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Excellencies. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, council members, if you do believe on peace and security, and you sit in these council members, you have to consider climate change as a security risk. I know that many of you read report from the climate change or from IPCC. But let me tell you that in my community where I come from, in my peoples who are the nomadic pastoralists, living from one place to another one to find water and pasture for our survival, they do not know the UNFCCC who is agency of climate change. They do not know there is a security council where a group of people sitting and thinking about peace around the world. But they leave the climate change. They leave the climate change impacting their daily life and them insecurity. When they sleep during the night, they dream about wake up tomorrow if they are going to get food or water for their children or someone else went before them and they have to fight him. They do not sit in the offices all day and wait at the end of the month to get salary to feed them families. More than 80% of our communities in Sahel, in particular in my regions, depend from the environment, depend from agriculture, from fish, from livestock. That's the daily life they have to go and fight, feed them families. The practical example is, because we are nomadic, we have to follow the patterns of water and pasture. With the last decade, we are experiencing the climate impact on all our resources. The natural resource shrinking. Of course, you already hear about the Lake Chad, but there are many other places that water disappear forever. Then this shrinking natural resources, people have to fight to get access. That's the local conflict who grow up every day and this local conflict become national conflict and become regional conflict. And worse, it's become a fertile place to the terror. As the terror is grow growing around all these places. Why they're growing? Maybe they have ideology. But maybe they also get the opportunity because people becoming poor and poor every day. Let me tell you in my region, man and woman responsibility are different. Man have the responsibility to feed his family. If he cannot do that, it's a big humiliation. His digni dignity is not respected. And for the dignity, they have to do only two things. Either they join the terror group because they have to confirm the humanity, being human being and feed them family. Or other, they have to leave the place where they are. This is the internal migration who create conflict inside the region. But they are also external because people do not have a choice. We all hear about the sad history in Libya where they are treating peoples in this 21st century. But they continue going. They have no choice. Either they go there or they jump in the sea, but they have to confirm their human dignity. Or they stay there back home 
fight and die. So for me, coming from these communities, where I wake up, I see the young peoples and then the babies growing in this area. Then I just think about next 10 decades or 20 years, what will be them features? Are they also going to jump in the sea? Are they also going to join the terrorist group? Or they are going just to kill each other because they have to eat. They have to survive. I think as council members, we have to go beyond the Paris Agreement, beyond the a one agency fighting for climate change. It has to be a global fight. Why a global fight? Because globalization can be also an opportunity. You can go to this community who do not access to even radio, but you can find the bottle of Coca-Cola. That means why we give them something who's useless for them why we cannot give them a great solution who can be access to the energy, who can help them to go to school, who can help them to get health, who can help them to do another alternative in their life and keep them in peace and think about the future for all. So the solution are there, but we need the solution to those people on ground most of the development going to the cities. But the problem are at the rural area and the solution must come from there. They're always fighting to get peace, to combat climate change, but they cannot do that alone because resources are not always there. They need a tools, they need a capacity. But we need to go there and see how they are living. Monitor that and get the solution. Who are very cheap because it's coming from the traditional knowledge that they have. I think I'm going to end by saying they do not have choice. They do not have any choice. But you, you do have one. Because you choose to sit in the council. You choose to fight for our peace and security around the world. So you must consider climate change as a security risk. You must give them hope, the man, woman, young peoples, but you must be, give them beyond hope because they do not deserve survive. They deserve a life as all of us. Thank you. I thank Ms. Ibrahim for a briefing.